Well, it took a few days to make this part, and the reason why is I kept deleting the old versions that came out with the old videos, and I was really thinking about how much do I really want to talk about the Ptolemies, how much do I want to talk about Cleopatra, and the fact that I personally don't, you know, a lot of people say that she was black. I don't exactly agree with that. Okay, I don't know for sure, but I lean towards she was definitely a white white person with white genes and comes down for the Macedonian bloodline. But um I need to stay. I say we go into um where we left off, which was I believe Ptolemy the fifth. Okay, he was the one given the Rosetta Stone. And then we go to Ptolemy the sixth who is so corrupt he fights a civil war. Ptolemy the seventh, one year after being king, he's killed. Ptolemy the eighth, his nickname Fatty, he has two wives and he marries the wife of Ptolemy the sixth. And um one of his wives dismembers his child and sends it back to him. And he erects the temple of Sobek, the crocodile god. Ptolemy the ninth, he flees to Cyprus and is accused of plotting to kill his own mother. Ptolemy the tenth is so fat he can't even walk on his own. Ptolemy the eleventh marries um, his older aunt. And he marries his older aunt and he gets killed and lynched after 19 days of being king. And then Ptolemy the twelfth is um illegitimate bastard because this like a power vacuum after Ptolemy the eleventh is killed. This creates a power vacuum in Egypt and they start figuring out what we gotta do. And Ptolemy the twelfth he bribes his way into power basically. And he's illegitimate and they call him the flute player and they call him lettuce. <laughs> so um for some reason um you know this cute little nickname stuck to him. Now Remember now, um, the Egyptians were pretty much a weak group. They re they deploy. I mean, not the Egyptians. The 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 Greek rulers. They depended on the Romans soldiers to um, to hold down the Egyptians and to keep them from rebelling. And they, they were not wanted. They're very corrupt people. These people are not very happy. We're getting very late into the foreign reign, foreign period. We are getting into you know um, the end of really foreign rule in Egypt. And as far as before Christ, okay, soon the Romans are going to take over. And what you're going to have is Cleopatra marrying one of the Romans at one point, okay? So Berninke is going to seize the throne, right? And he is going to, when Ptolemy is kicked out, he's going to come back and he's going to execute Berninke, okay? ISIS worship is going to start being on the rise. And so when Cleopatra is, you know, start rising in power, she's called the living embodiment of ISIS, and she's worshipped as that, as ISIS on Earth. Very occult thing, okay? Um, so ISIS, remember, is the mother goddess, and she married Osiris, and she had his kid, Horus, after Osiris died. She put him back together, and she had his kid so Horus is born miraculously now Cleopatra is the last true Ptolemy ruler I mean Ptolemy ruler <laughs> we get the P-T-O-L-E-M-E -E, so I always say sometimes I think to say Ptolemy because I'm thinking about how it's spelled in my head <laughs> but it's really Ptolemy and the P is silent but anyway she goes south and she um, speaks a lot of languages and she's a politician. And so her and her son are named co-rulers. They're ruling together, okay? And Pythias is kind of like the evil advisor to her son who put turning the people against her and they're plotting against her a lot. And she um, plots to kill her at one point. So what happens is there's a civil Rome, war in Rome and Pompey flees to Egypt. And Caesar comes to straighten it all out. But Matthias betrays him, and he cuts off Pompey's head in front of Pompey's family, thinking this is going to please Caesar. Caesar arrives, and he's furious. Okay, There's a small war in Alexander War, and Matthias is executed. His younger brother drowns. I mean, Cleopatra's younger brother drowns trying to escape. And she marries... Um, she, she marries the youngest brother, Ptolemy the 14th 
Okay, so Cleopatra gets married. Ptolemy the Fourteenth, the youngest brother, disappears. So um, basically, so, so while Caesar's there, she takes him on a tour, and um, Caesar goes back to Rome and calls for her. And so we start seeing Cleopatra the old. One of the reasons I, I pause to think is like, hmm, how much do I really want to go into the scandalous stuff that Cleopatra did that I don't approve of? And I don't think she was a great ruler. I don't think she was a smart ruler. I think she was a slut and a traitor and um, not somebody to really be worshipped, really somebody to look up to. So, you know. A lot of you women watch, watching this video, a lot of you black women, you know, don't be like, oh, Cleopatra was such a good, smart lady. And, you know, we, it's very unlikely that she was black in the first place, you know, and secondly, she was a complete slut. And she has sex with and marries a lot of different people, and it's really not pretty, okay? So, you know, Caesar builds a temple where Cleopatra is portrayed as Isis. And, and this is what eventually gets him famously stabbed on the Senate steps, okay? And so this, at this point, Cleopatra has to flee, obviously, because the senators are outraged that, you know, the, that Caesar wants to declare himself a god. And, you know, Cleopatra is obviously pushing for that kind of occult mentality. The secret society surrounding this whole thing, big time. The secret society cults are saying, look, they're pushing her and she is pushing Caesar to declare himself a god and create a new world. They're talking a lot about this new world order ideology during this period. <sighs> and she's just a complete slut, you know. And uh, but uh, we gotta eventually talk about her because she does fit into this occult type of ideas and part of the spread. And this is why um, you see a lot of portrayals in Rome and the fact that they're starting to build Egyptian god statues in Rome even more, even though their gods are orig originally based on the Greek gods, which are based on the Egyptian gods in the first place. But we start seeing um, the Egyptian gods being openly built as Egyptian gods in Rome, and this obviously makes them mad. They like their white interpretation of the pagan gods. They don't like the direct interpretation from Egypt itself. <clears throat> so anyway, we have um, what happens is these these Roman emperors are all constantly kissing Egypt's butt for we for wheat and um, let's see you know eventually they have these little wars and um, you know a lot a lot of the stuff like temple in New York um, in Denver is given to us for our effort in saving Nubian temples we that's what how part of how we know a lot of this information you know. Um, at one point, Cleopatra, when she, Octavian marches on um, Egypt, she fakes her death. Because what happens is, Mark Anthony, after Caesar's killed, Mark Anthony raises an army. He tries to fight Octavian, and he tries to use sea vessels, and he fails. He should have just attacked on land, but he listens to Cleopatra. She, he fails. She flees in her nice ship, and he is so mad at the world that he eventually kills himself. And... Um, Octavian comes to attack him again back in Egypt, and Cleopatra, you know, ha has her servant sneak in a snake and gets killed. Okay, that's basically her story. So, um, I know I jumped out around a little bit for a second, you know, but uh, basically, you know, that's that's how it went down. And um, a good mo a good movie to watch that's fairly factual about it is I believe it's called Cleopatra and it's made I believe in 1963 I'm not sure but I believe they have that on YouTube as well you know and that's a good it's a long movie though I think it was about four hours but you know it gives a good image of what kind of what happened you know of course it has a lot of movie stuff thrown in there and stuff um, anyway Revelations I want to end this part by saying Revelations 21:27 nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is harmful, shameful, or deceitful, but only those whose name is written in the book of life, in the Lamb's book of life. I believe that's the exact quote. It's Revelations 21, 27. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Now, obviously, they're referring to the Egyptian Book of Life.